No two tactile switches are created equally, and especially for those that are new to this hobby, it can be a little confusing sometimes trying to understand what exactly it is you're buying when a manufacturer tells you a switch is tactile. Especially those that are experienced in this hobby, you all know that there's a ton of different types of tactility out there. And starting today, we're going to be taking a look at the different examples that exist. We'll be starting off with the Gateron Golden Cat Brown V2s, Cyberpunk switches, and AE Boards Navy switches. All products that you'll be seeing in today's video are listed down in the video's description. There should also be a link down there to the test platform we're using for all of the switch comparisons today. And at the end of the video, we'll have all the sound tests so you can take a listen to what all of these switches sound like in our test platform. And one quick note, all of the switches will be tested at stock today. Modded testing will be done in future content pieces for each of these switches. And as always, if you want to see more content like these deep dives, exploring the more bespoke aspects of custom keyboards and beyond, make sure you toss the video a thumbs up on your way out and make sure you subscribe to Notified so you don't miss any of our content when it goes live. In our last Switch shootout, I misspoke in calling Gateron Cap Yellows just Gateron Cap Switches, as there's actually an entire lineup of Cap Switches. On deck today is the Gateron Golden Cap Brown V2. As purchased through Prevail Key Company, these switches ran about 54 cents per switch, including shipping, sold in units of 10 rather than 35 like the Milky Cap Yellows we looked at. But this allows customers to buy more precisely what they need rather than ending up with a bunch of unused switches, though I admittedly really like the reusable switch tray from the Cap Yellows. While I'm unfamiliar with the 5-pin housings bill of materials and can't seem to find that information listed anywhere, the stem seems to be palm, and the spring is a 55 gram long boy like the one we saw in the Cap Yellow, creating a small amount of preloaded tension. Tactility is otherwise nearly identical to a standard Gateron Brown, providing light, rounded tactility, though maybe just a touch more than the OG. Do note that because the bottom housing is designed for through-hole RGB LEDs, these will let next to no SMD-mounted LED light through, if that's something you care about. The use of the unique caps design is supposed to create a more stable switch in practice, though there is still some lackluster stem wobble on the X-axis in my samples. These switches come pre-lubed with a very thin lube that thankfully doesn't dull what tactility does exist, ultimately creating a truly smooth light tactile. Sadly, it's less consistently lubed than what we saw in the cap yellows. Removal of the lube doesn't reveal much more tactility here and only makes the switch more scratchy, so you may as well leave that as is. Using the switch for several days revealed the same issues with the spring as I encountered with the cap yellows and that some of them have a bit of spring crunch due to odd lubing, and not every switch broke in. If there was one easy mod to improve these switches, relube the top and bottom of the spring with some 205 grade zero, or simply bag lube them all with some GPL 105, and apply some switch films to help shore up stem wobble. AE Board's navies were up next. Coming in at around 72 cents per switch after shipping at Canon Keys, sold in packs of 35 switches. It utilizes a polycarbonate top housing and nylon three-pin bottom housing with a mixed polyethylene tactile stem, similar to an MX clear stem, to provide smoothness while also accounting for the odd shrinkage rates UHMWPE tends to struggle with in mechanical switches, at least according to what I've read on the subject. With a 58 gram spring, these switches are relatively light, making for an overall easy and satisfying typing experience, in theory. The design itself is otherwise nothing we haven't seen before to some capacity. The legs are lightly lubed, but no other part of the switch or stem is. This leads to the tactile event itself feeling relatively smooth, as in no scratch, but lateral stem movement reveals the lack of lube and that the plastic rubbing together feels sort of grippy as opposed to coarse like most unlubed switches feel. Spring ping is negligible on bottom out, which also has a decently thocky sound thanks to the long stem pole. Also, since the bottom housing is more open, the switch allows for decent RGB shine through for SMD LEDs. The biggest issue with these switches was that at stock, I was able to repeatedly get the spacebar stuck on my testbed platform, something that didn't happen with any other switch present for testing. Relubing one with Tribosys 3204 and applying a switch film didn't help. When I also applied a 63.5 gram sprit spring, that seemed to help quite a bit, but the switch would still stick sometimes. I also tried to redo the stabilizer on the testbed platform just in case I had maybe overtuned the stabilizer and it had gotten a little bit sluggish, but that really didn't fix the problem either, and swapping over to any other switch I have in-house, I couldn't get the switch to stick again. So, as an insurance policy, if you end up going with AE Board's Navy switches, I would recommend grabbing some Duroc gold-plated 65 or 67 gram springs, just to make sure this switch can overcome the return trip, because I think there's something weird going on with the design of the leg on these tactile stems. 
It could also just have something to do with the fact that the spring is too light with this switch to account for a PBT OEM profile spacebar, but sound off in the comments below if you've had a different experience with these navies. Last switch up is probably the strangest of the bunch, as well as the most expensive. Cyberpunks can be had from drop in packs of 70, 90, and 110, and two different spring weights and colorways, with the 90 pack I got running about 84 cents per switch after shipping. Sheesh. The materials list of polycarbonate top, nylon five pin bottom housing, and palm stem aren't what's exciting here. What is exciting is the box design of the switch and its unique kind of tactility. Box switches are named not after the design of the stem, but rather the leaf assembly being enclosed in a box near the stem legs, bestowing upon the switch an IP56 rating for dust and water resistance. This design therefore requires a plastic nub to be present between the leaf and stem leg, which interestingly is the only leg present on the stem. The spring is similarly long like the cap switch uses, having a bottom out rating of 67 grams. While the spring doesn't have much ping, thanks in part to being lubed at least at the bottom, it is a bit chatty in conjunction with the very sharp tactility the switch provides and the lack of lube anywhere else on the switch, other than the tactile bump on the leg. The slide rails are mounted on the top housing rather than the bottom, and because the variant we got is meant for RGB shine through, there are no issues with adding that little touch of RGB flare if you desire. Now that tactility, this is what's referred to as stepped tactility, similar to a box royal switch. Imagine rolling a hand truck down a normal flight of stairs as opposed to something like a speed bump, or the sensation of pressing a ballpoint pen through a piece of paper, and that's the kind of tactility you get here. It forces the typist to be very purposeful in their keystrokes, which for some may be a bit distracting, while others may find it helps their typing accuracy in that they must apply a very specific force to overcome the tactile step, which is present right at the top of switch travel. There's almost no pre-travel on this switch. The switch is otherwise actually relatively smooth in that there's minimal scratch, but applying your own lube is still highly recommended. Nothing thicker than Tribosys 3204 to minimize loss of tactility and maximize smooth actuation. Switch films are also off the table, at least with the KBD fans films I typically use, since the box design doesn't allow them to fit properly. Now on the screen, you should be seeing some of my personal takes on these switches. Again, this is all a preference based thing. Your individual mileage may vary with these switches. And while none of these are perfect by any stretch of the imagination, they all have something really cool to offer keyboard enthusiasts. And all of these will definitely be getting used in a build in a future point in time on the channel. Now, Sound off in the comments below if you made it this far. Let me know what kinds of tactile switches you're interested in and which ones you'd like to see me take a closer look at on this channel. And if you made it to the end, thank you so much for watching. Remember, toss the video a thumbs up on the way out if you like what you saw and get subscribed and notified so you don't miss our content anytime it goes live. And we'll catch you all next time. Take it easy.